fun to see the kids invited to Sunday school and off they are in their community. I'm thankful this morning to be invited uh, in to uh, participate in this worship service as a guest speaker. I, I, I come actually as a newish member of Kingsway Baptist Church. Uh, all the guest preachers in uh, this summer series have been invited to speak and reflect and speak out of scripture on our Kingsway Baptist Church's vision, uh, values, uh, mission mandates, as it were. So um, I'm just going to pray for our time together, just kind of adhering to the, listening to the word uh, along with me. Lord Jesus, we, speaking of invitations, um, it sounds almost silly to invite you to be present because it is your presence that fills this place and fills our lives. And yet we do, Lord, very consciously as a community of people gathered in this place and to this place online that we want to come and welcome you and welcome hearing your voice and welcome hearing having your presence with us lord speak to us speak to us that we may live speak to us that we may have light speak to us that we may love even as you are you love us we pray these things in your precious name lord jesus Amen. As I've already mentioned, uh, my invitation was to come and speak as one of the guest preachers for this summer series to really reflect from Scripture on our Kingsway vision. And, uh, you know, if it's not in front of you, um, uh, our vision statement. I actually have printed out this for my own home's use, but uh, the vision that we have is changing through Jesus in community, engaging like Jesus in our world. Now visions are pictures, and I don't know what picture comes to your mind when you hear that. Changing through Jesus in community, engaging like Jesus in the world. What, 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 uh, what captures your imagination? Does it capture anything? Do you imagine anything? What, what comes through your mind when you think change? I don't know, maybe there's a gut feeling like change. I don't know, I don't like change. Uh, and already you think, well, I don't know how good this vision is if it has to do with change. Changing in Jesus, through Jesus, in community. I don't know what your, 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 your feel for community is, what your experience with community is. How about engaging like Jesus in our world? Maybe on a bad day you say, I don't want to do any engagement, you know, just leave me alone, I don't know. So what comes to your mind? What does this vision statement of our church, changing through Jesus in community, engaging like Jesus in our world, what does it bring to mind for you? What's the predominant picture that comes up? Well, this morning what I'd like to do is the picture that forms in my mind, excuse my spitting, I, Ian, I'm overpowering the mic system, eh? Um, it, what comes to my mind comes out of a, a letter that the Apostle John wrote. It's out of 1 John, he wrote a series of three letters, the epistles, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. He is the writer uh, or the person that stands behind the gospel that bears his name. Uh, what we know about John as the apostle is he was part of one of the first uh, of that original 12 that followed Jesus around. And uh, our church history tells us, you know, history tells us uh, that he was known to have lived a very, very long life. In fact, the end of the Gospel of John says, some people have had the rumor that he was gonna live forever. And Jesus, Jesus, John says, no, no, I wasn't supposed to live forever, but he lived for a long, long time. And in fact, he was like the, um, how do I say this? He was like the, um, 
I, I don't know what the title is, but it, he's like the main pastor in his ripe old age for the CBOQ. His CBOQ, the Canadian Baptist, uh, I mean, you know, his, his area was actually Asia Minor, which is modern day Turkey. But he had the responsibility as the kind of patriarch or the elder or the father figure, the grandfather figure for these churches spread out in this whole vicinity uh, of, of Asia Minor. And he would go from place to place and visit the different congregations, the different communities of God's people, of Jesus followers in all these places. So he wrote letters. And, and I want you to hear and consider what picture comes to your mind as he writes this. Would you turn with me or follow with me a reading from 1 John 1, the first four verses. And are we able to project that? Uh, I wanted it formatted because this is how I read it. It what? It's okay, Phil. Okay. You know, this, this is what life is like, right? Different things that you plan on and then it doesn't happen. You guys, if you have a chance, if, I don't know, pull out a Bible in front of you, turn to 1 John 1. I want you to see the text. I want you to see the words, even as I read it in English. Um, there are members of our congregation, I know, whose first language might not even be in English. And so I, when I with churches where there are multiple languages going on, I say, read it, read, the, read it, read these words, read the scriptures in your own heart's language. Um, but here it is in English, which we have. John wrote in the, original, <laughs> in the original Greek. He wrote in Greek, okay? That's what he originally did. So, but, so we don't hear him in the original Greek, but I want you to hear him in our English version, and I'm taking it from the today's new, in, new international version. That which was from the beginning, John writes, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this is what we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life, the life appeared and we have seen it, and we testify to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. <laughs> fellowship in the original Greek is koinonia. It's what we often say as the word community, okay? So that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship, our common life, what we share so deeply together, our community, is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. What picture of this springs to your mind uh, as I read John's writing? He uses very simple Greek words. I, some students that I've led around the scripture study of, of 1 John, they hated it. They hate this book because they don't like how John writes, how he talks. He's repetitious. He's like, uh, he, you know, for those of us who are kind of trained, like, no, give me point one, point two, and then give me conclusion. Give me this kind of straight line narrative. He's kind of crazy. You know, he, he's, he talks more like a poet. He repeats himself, he picks up a phrase, and then he goes and develops it over here. Oh, he goes back here and he links it. So I want you to feel what this kind of, what his writing is like for you, okay? He, he uses his, this is his style, but listen to the words that he specially chooses. He says, that which was from the from the beginning. Oh, like what in the world is he referring to? 
that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this is what we proclaim concerning the word of life. Well, the beginning, what does John mean? I, you know, is he talking about his own initial beginning? He was one of the original disciples that followed Jesus, so in the early days, uh, so the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Uh, but because he is the writer John, and he wrote a gospel that talks about, begins with the beginning, it hearkens to Genesis. The whole idea that in the beginning, God, God. And so that's what we begin this with. That which was from the beginning. John wants us to think, oh, something to do with God. We proclaim this concerning the word of life. So this beginning also has to deal with life. So connected into the beginning and the word of life, and this life later, he says, it has, it's, we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and which has appeared to us. What John is saying is, this is what we experience. We want to tell you, out of our own life experiences, that the very presence of God creator God has come down to planet earth into our very lives. Eternal is only linked to the being of God. Nothing else is eternal, as it were, apart from him. Does that make sense? He is saying something incredible about what happens. So, this is one of the main affirmations that John says that life originates in God and his nature, who he is. He is the source of life. It's not some abstract thing, you know, like, oh, what is life about? No, life pertains to God. And I don't know if you believe what John is saying, but he is claiming, oh my goodness, it is so easy for us to believe that what has come down into our human lives <laughs> are <laughs> smackdowns by evil, smackdowns by, by hard things, hardship. But isn't it incredible to think, my goodness, that the very person of God has come down and visited planet Earth. Uh, my housemates and I were on a road trip and we saw a billboard you know, those billboards that kind of appear in the rural areas, and all of a sudden there's words, and the word says, um, we are not alone. And, and I, 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 frankly, um, Jesus followers as we were, I said, what in the world does that billboard mean? I, I, I have to confess, my first thought went to uh, alien visitation. Okay, uh, but do, do, you, do you see what I'm saying? Some of it is what we bring to our understanding of billboard statements. And so here we are at Kingsway, we're saying changing, you know, through Jesus in community. I, I don't want to think, us to think alien visitation. What, she, what John is claiming is, oh my gosh, here's something incredible. He's not alien. He's creator, the creator, the very life of God has come down to us in the person of Jesus. Okay, he's also represented by the word word, logos, the word of life, and this is life, eternal life which was the Father has appeared. So God himself is life and he brings that life. And it's the word of life. Uh, now word, you have, to, you have to have a taste for being multicultural at this point. Word is a big word in, in Greek thinking, in, among Greek people, the ancient Greek people. For us, I don't know, we live in a day and age where we think, oh, words are cheap. Uh, I don't know, easy for you to say, easy for you to say, it's action that matters. But for, for Greek speaking people, the word logos, so therefore, the word of life, Jesus is the word of life, the eternal life of God that's come in. The word for, for, for Greek people 
in their Greek world word of thought, it carries the sense of meaning, reason. It's the whole purpose, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. Not cheap, but substantive. Okay, it has substance. And so John says, the word, the word of life came down. Well, I say multicultural because not only is this kind of Greek thought, but John in his being, in his self, has wedded it to Hebrew understanding of word, okay? Because who speaks in Genesis? In the beginning, God. And when God says there's light, let there be light, light appears. When God says, let there be, it comes to pass. And so wedded to this idea of substance, of the kit and caboodle, the whole substance core of it, the meaning, John has the layer, the Hebrew layer, the Old Testament layer that says, um, wow, God has authority, God discloses, God makes decisions by his word. When he speaks, it takes place. And so what John says, what do we have in Jesus? We have that which was from the beginning, the word of life, come down, ex come down. The second thing that John is saying, which I think it, it actually blows my mind, he says, this word, which was from the beginning, we have heard it, we have seen with our eyes, we have looked at, and our hands have touched. It's very, I'm a, on the Myers-Briggs, I'm an SJ, so sensing really matters to me, okay? But in other words, this word of life in Jesus that appeared was, she, John says, we had, notice he says we, he talks about him and his generation of people. We experienced it. We have first hand, up, front, close and center experience. We touched it. We heard it. We have seen with our very own eyes. In fact, he kind of doubles back and uses two words of seeing, sight. We have seen with our eyes. We have looked at. And they're, they're kind of two Greek words, which mean one, one of the, these seeing words has to do with the kind of seeing that I think the, uh, some of the scientists saw when they looked through the, uh, the uh, what is it? the telescope, the, and, and they, they, oh my gosh, and they saw galaxies and stars and things of the cosmos which had never been seen before. Some of them said, we just broke down and wept. Okay, there's a kind of seeing that, that takes in the wonder of it all. And then the other kind of seeing that, 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 that John writes is, we looked at. In other words, we really did tangibly connect we actually apprehended, we saw. So the two things that, that John says, the life of God has really entered our planet Earth and into our human lives, seriously. And the second thing is that the life of God has come among us, really, really. Well, isn't that an incredible picture that he's formed? Think about the changed lives that come about when the eternal God, the creator, has come in our midst, in Jesus. Well, that's it. Forms community. That's because life is inherently, the life of God is inherently relational. Okay, we now come, in, we now come to understand, oh my gosh, God is three in one. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's, there's complexity, I mean, there's relationship. And we are called into this kind of relationship. The life has appeared, and we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father. Now, the incredible thing, I find it incredible how John talks about engagement of the world with the world. He basically says, you know what? It's a communication engagement. <laughs> It is, we, we connect. 
we connect, we proclaim to you. It's a word that says um, we connect and we communicate, we testify, um, we keep saying this. We, we, yeah, we make it known. And why do we do this? It, it, it's, it's to make more community. It is to build relationships. And John says, this relationship, this fellowship that we have, this community, he says, we write this, we proclaim to you this eternal life, we, we proclaim to you what we have seen in her, so that you can have fellowship with us. Not because, you know, we, we, you know, we want, it's in the party spirit kind of way, like, hey, come join us. No, he says, no, no, come be with our, this fellowship, because this fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus. Ah, oh. and John says we 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 kind of we kind of are open open about telling you all this and connecting with you about all this because we want our joy complete. It's a joyful thing. It's a joyful thing to see people come into fellowship with the eternal God and come alive. Well, men and women, I, I made a big deal out of, I hope you think this is a big deal. This is the vision that comes to my mind when I think about what we as a church community are saying, changing. It's not a one-time thing, but it's gonna be an ongoing change in community with others, in Jesus, who is the word of life, the eternal Lord. And we're gonna be engaging others. How do we engage? Well, the same way Jesus engaged people, up close and intimate, okay? I've run out of time, but I have story, you have. This, I think this is what we need to do with one another. Um, I just received uh, in by email a Kingsway, my, our church family directory. Did you guys receive it too? Yeah, I, th I, I love it that in, in different places it just talks about how we are to be with each other as community. Uh, in other words, I think we are built up in our community and we keep changing as we tell one another our stories of how we have touched Jesus how we have seen him at work in our lives, how, we have, how we're hearing him, what's he saying to us, okay? And it is from that that we go out, join up with the taste of the Danforth, um, and we write this to make our joy complete. I don't know, being with other people and being with God in the midst of other people, it's a joyful thing. Okay, yeah, let's go out and celebrate with our neighbors, taste of the Danforth. Let's engage intimately, up front and close, so that our joy can be full, because we're seeing people touched by the life of God. And we're a part of helping each other recognize his speaking into our lives, his seeing us and, and all that that relationship means. Men and women, what do you think? Is that a good vision? I think we have a heck of a vision. Let's go out and now live it. There's a praise song, yes? All right, Christina. Praise to our God, who has made the decision as the Logos to come and live with us. <laughs>